Hello and welcome to the episode 217 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A couple of concerts at the Cavern Club, an important album release, and the arrival of a new instrument in Abbey Road are the main stories of today's episode. On the 5th of August 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at an all-night session at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, sharing the bill with the Rim of Four, jazz trumpeter Kenny Ball and his jazzmen, and other jazz acts. Same venue in 1962 for another evening performance of the same lineup of the Beatles. Tonight's Cavern Club gig, though, was different in the lads being the main attraction on the stage. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, topped the bill for the Armstrong Show, a yearly bank holiday event taking place in Abbotsfield Park, Armstrong, just south of Manchester. Both Beatles historian Mark Lewison and BeatlesBible.com cite the event as a four-act affair, but looking at the ticket and the program of the event on Google Images, the only other bands involved seem to be the Denisons and Brian Poole and the Tremolos. Anyhow, it's time to move to 1966 and talk about a double UK release. On this date, record shops displayed the Beatles' new single and new album. The single was the double A-side Eleanor Rigby, Yellow Submarine, which endured 13 weeks of chart successes. The album, Revolver, was saluted as the start of a new phase in the Beatles' career and a groundbreaking moment for pop music. The album had already sold 300,000 copies on advance orders alone, and spent 34 weeks in the charts, including 7 weeks on the number one spot, but it was much more than a simple number-crunching affair. As we've seen earlier, starting on episode 96, this was the first album in which the Beatles fully immersed themselves in the studio, using it as some kind of instrument to make music, making all kinds of sonic experiments to create something that they could have hardly brought on a stage given the live technology at the time. Tape loops, tape speed manipulations, automatic double tracking, reversed sounds, Indian music, brasses, string quartets… These things alone would have made the album stand out, but there was also a quantum leap in the compositions themselves, lyrically more mature and even more musically adventurous than before. Equally important for this series is your support. Please visit www.simonmas.com support and see what you can do to help me with my continuing efforts to produce more and better music-related content. Thank you for being fab! Let's close the episode with yet another 1969 studio session in Abbey Road. On this date, Paul McCartney arrived at the EMI studio with a bag of monotape snippets he had created at home with his Brennell tape machine. With the help of the studio staff, he used some for the crossfade between You Never Give Me Your Money and Sun King, with sounds of bells, birds and crickets. Also today, for £25, about £390 in 2020 money, George Harrison had his Moog synthesizer transported and installed in room 43 of the EMI Studios, so that the instrument's sound could be routed to any of the three studios. The band started using it immediately to complete the work on the new album, overdubbing its sound on Because. After that, the Beatles recorded the first vocal track on the end, concluding the 6.30 to 10.45 pm session. Meanwhile, between 8 and 9.30 pm, engineer Tony Clark and tape operator Alan Parsons made a copy of a cassette privately recorded by John and Yoko onto quarter-inch tape. The tape was taken away by the Lennon's assistant, Anthony Fawcett. This concludes today's episode. Tomorrow, we'll focus on the developments of the Bigger Than Jesus controversy in the States. Join me for this and more. 
for the moment. I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.